Oh, hey, welcome everybody. I want to have a quick chat about, uh, I guess if you've seen my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, uh, you'll probably see, I, I made some comments today about the uh, Lock and Load Line of Fire number 14 magazine. And, you know, I kind of went off on one of my little, uh, gee, I'm not happy routines. But I just came home and, and I want to contrast that with what I experienced this evening and maybe that'll help those that think I'm an irrational crazy guy um, understand where I'm coming from. So tonight I uh, I played this game. Yeah, it's a lock and load title, it's the lock and load series, tactical, squad level, game ringer hills set in the Falklands or the Malvinas depending on whose side you're on. It's good stuff, we played uh, a suburb, a suburb, uh, a title called uh, The Burbs and uh, you know we got started and <coughs> both of us are I think recently seasoned players, Pete has played two, three, four, five times as many scenarios as I have. But we just got started with chat and we weren't really paying attention and we realized we screwed up something pretty significant and it meant that my side was, uh, you know, busted, broken, done, and uh, we screwed up. So we scratched that game and said, what are we, what are we thinking? It was the, it wasn't, we weren't even three quarters of the way through the first turn and we just weren't paying attention. So we reset. It's now midnight and I've been home for about 30 or 40 minutes and saying goodnight to the kids and stuff like that. So we played about, uh, we had dinner beforehand and we played maybe uh, three hours. Uh, taking breaks in between and talking to people at the game store, at Great Hall Games and just having a they're having a good time. It's fun. You know, chatting people come by. Oh, what are you playing? Oh, Great Hall. You know, we're at Great Hall. We're playing this. We're doing this, doing this. You know, taking pictures and whatever. So, really good fun. Really, really good fun. And the game went from, uh, after my first experience, the uh, first five minutes with the scenario that I've not played before, of, oh my God, I'm getting my ass kicked here. So, I'm not going to play the way I played in the first scenario, even though it was just one turn. And, of course, my plan was now... Get exposed, and so um, you know, Pete adjusted his defense, so I had to have a different plan. So I take this very uh, gradual approach into capturing parts of the parts of the burbs as the, the scenario requires you to. It's full on, grind your way through, capture uh, victory locations, and kill bad guys, and you get victory points. That's or, or keep uh, locations and kill bad guys. So uh, I was down because he had all the VP cities, uh, hexes, town hexes, and uh, and was killing my guys. I was down 20 or 25 victory points and get my ass kicked and trying to get the British across this awful uh, island terrain. And the terrain maps have these hexes that are um, uh, rough terrain or broken terrain. So they cost three to move into, and they give you a plus three defense on your die roll when you're being shot at. So they're really good hexes to be in, but they're expensive to move into if you only have four movement points. So I'm trying to grind my way through, and it's the fourth turn, and I've lost a bunch of guys, and he, I've killed a few of his guys, but I'm really not getting too close to town. Get a few reinforcements. He gets a few reinforcements. I fly some Harrier jets over the top. He blows them up with blowpipes. It's all going, you know, haywire. He's rolling boxcars. I'm rolling twos. It's just a freaking disaster for for me. And he's rolling like a rock star as usual. And and I kind of factor that into my play now when I play Pit. So we're having a great time, right? Well, at the end of the fifth turn, I was like, ah, there's no way I can win. I'm done. You know, we might as well just pack it up. And it's 10 8 eight nine thirty something like that nearly ten o'clock or whatever and let's just pack it up and we'll let's play a, sh a short three turn scenario and he's like well let's just you know finish this turn out and see what happens and so i had a little epiphany here and there and he rolled a few bad rolls and next thing you know i'm back in the game and uh, we're sort of overrunning each other's uh, infantry with uh, armored cars and shooting stuff up and so far we're having a great time right well, it all comes down to the wire, as it nearly always does with lock and load scenarios. And at first, I thought that you know this was a, a, a scenario that was, you know, it's just going to be okay. Uh, 
but it came down to the wire. Now, not down to the ninth and final turn, but certainly, uh, I think the eighth turn, <coughs> where was a, there was a pivotal uh, Malay uh, situation, close assault situation, and based on what happened there would really determine what happened with the, with the game, with the, the scenario. So I had an excellent time. And uh, one of the reasons why I, I get so frustrated when I see any company really, but a company that, whose products I really like, and, when, and I think, you know, I've played a lot of games I've not played. I played the very original ASL, Advanced Squad Leader. I've played quite a few tactical games. When I play a game that I really enjoy and I see the company doing things that are clearly even a novice like me can see uh, uh, and novice in the board game industry anyway uh, that are poor practices and don't make sense it, I get really really disappointed and I get frustrated uh, and I put I put my money where my mouth is when I say something's awesome I, I buy it and I pay for it uh, like the blocks in the west and blocks in the east, I bought all my copies of my games. I didn't receive reviewer copies. I don't pimp games. I just talk about games I'm enjoying, and I, and I think I hope that comes out as uh, what I'm doing. Right? It's uh, more. Of, I hope a more. Well, I'm not saying anyone else is disingenuous. <coughs> uh, if I post ten videos about Lock and Load, it's because I love playing Lock and Load. If I post 10 videos about OCS, like I have with DAC, I've posted 37 videos on DAC 2. Uh, I'm hoping that I will have the balls to start playing great um, Good Air and Splitscreek 2 and Case Blue together. That'll be, you know, 50 or 60 videos, who knows how many, or 50 blog posts. Or maybe it'll be two and I'll get frustrated with it and throw it all in the box, right? Um, but when I when when I like something and I get and I see people making fundamental business mistakes, I really it really boils my butt. And uh, <clears throat> I saw an opportunity for the lock and load owners to set the ship on the right course and really step up and, and do a, a quality job and get it right. Uh, make a really good first impression because you only make a first impression one time. Yeah, and they haven't done it with this line of fire 14. And the, the problem is, now you're now you're saying sorry and you're fixing things, as opposed to, hey, here I am, look what I did. We're awesome, and it's going to continue to be awesome, and you should buy more stuff. Well, now I think we're, we're all smart if we wait and see, wait and see what how what they do to fix the issues with line of fire 14, because it's not just miscut counters. It's font sizing. It's a translation from some digital format to the die cut process. Uh, there's some issue there. The font sizing is wrong. The graphics are wrong. The DPI registering is the registering of the counters is wrong. The DPI count is wrong. Uh, these are fundamental things that shouldn't have passed if samples were sent. And I know samples weren't sent to them. Digital samples were sent, and they looked fine. So it makes me sad, first of all. It makes me sad that uh, they've missed an opportunity and that a great little company is now going to be fighting to uh, regain the confidence of this consumer. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very cautious about my approach to the company. I absolutely want them to succeed. I absolutely want them to uh, continue to make great games and publish publish more games because if they don't you know this sucker becomes a collector's item right you'll probably be paying 200 bucks for this one day maybe whatever i don't want that to happen i want there to be so many copies out there that i can run into someone in the street and say hey you want to play ring of hills i say yeah i'd love to It'd be awesome let's do it i've actually met a couple of guys at the game store today uh who say that they had uh, overheard people in the store buying games that I was talking about. That was kind of bizarre, considering I'd never reviewed the game. So I want I want people to talk about this. I want people to talk about Ring of Hills and go, yeah, I gotta get that game. I gotta go get the new pre-order. 
that's got you know a whole bunch of extra maps and another couple hundred counters and a bunch of new scenarios. I want you to get excited about it, but I don't want you to get excited about it if I think the the end product. If I'm going to get you excited about something that is arguably you know a, a substandard product, kind of like you know America conquered is an example of something where for a lot of different reasons, uh, many of which we don't, you know, we're not privy to all the ins and outs of that company and what was going on while this game was being produced, um, you know, because of the transaction and, and the, the relationship between all the, the investors and parties and owners and things. We're not 100% privy to everything that went on there. So no, I don't need, I don't, I don't want to know all that gory detail. What I want is good quality games that are finished, and I don't want to hear all the drama. I don't want excuses and explanations. Just say, look, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it right, and we're going to do it. And it's going to be awesome. Trust me. But don't wear my trust out. So, the video today is not about how annoyed I am with the game, the game company. It's how excited I am about the game and the games they make that Lock and Load Publishing make and how I hope for them, as opposed to knowing now, I hope that they will continue to strive to make things better and, uh, and, and, and fix things. So if you're, if you're in two minds about the company, uh, that's okay. But don't discount them and don't walk away from them. I think we, we owe them, you know, we owe the new guys some time. Let them work it out. And if they don't work it out, then that's too bad, right? We'll move on. We'll find something else to play. We'll, we'll play what we have. Or maybe uh, maybe something else will happen. But uh, keep rolling dice. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. And I mean, I had the best friggin' time now. Did I win? Yeah, I did. And was it a big comeback? It sure was, baby. It was awesome. Uh, Pete, 32 to 23 victory points. Player. Talk to you soon, guys.